Hey guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. So I'm not sure if this noise is going to be taken off by my um, microphone or not. I wasn't going to record much on the repair for this one, but <laughs> it's not much going on that I wanted to share either way where, where I'm going to do. So I'm going to replace the uh, capacitors that were bad on this one. So I got those already here. And I have the EEPROM, which is an uh, electrostatic protection uh, bag. I removed the other computer from the um, simulator. I left all the wires in there because I'm most likely going to need it for this one to do the, the final test. I have like 20 EEPROMs. Those are very common for these ones, and I'm going to be working on those. So I got uh, a strip of EEPROMs. And I have two different sizes of capacitors in here. And I have a lot more. Those are the ones that I didn't have. I always have an assortment of parts that I like to keep. Obviously, you know, when you're doing this, you like to keep, you know, chips and capacitors that you're going to be uh, needing all the time. I always uh, put the name on it. I have some other, like, this is uh, electrolytic capacitors, 400 volts or so for um, high intensity uh, lights. But I do have an assortment of parts, so hopefully everything will be good in this one. And I was thinking if I want to do a screen recording or, um, let me see, sometimes I think the microscope uh, look is probably the best for you guys to see. Should I have that ready? <laughs> All right, that should do it. GoPro is not so bad, but the light of the our camera it doesn't uh, let you guys see it a hundred percent let me close the K tag I was going to do another computer that I have here but I decided to finish this one <clears throat> gonna stop in a second just to see how much noise or not of these fans you guys can hear I'm going to put them into a maximum speed, which is a little loud for me, but it's important, so it sucks all the fumes. But let me stop the video one second, guys. Well, actually, as far as I can hear from my, you know, same microphone in here, you guys can hear pretty much nothing in there, so perfect. So I'm going to put them into the maximum speed. And now let me make sure that I can see the camera is on. Okay, perfect. And now let's see if we're looking at the same things. I'm just adjusting there. Oh, pretty good. Got to give uh, thanks to Paul Daniels. He is the one who recommend me that adjustment set up for the camera, and it works flawlessly. I love it. All right, so let's start the recording now. Yeah, I can keep that there. <clears throat> Got the iron pretty much ready to go. On the capacitors, I usually what I like to do is... Uh, get the uh, the solder and iron to remove the like this is the ground side and this is the positive side how i know that because like you see how easy i can melt this side and i can lift it you see that the ground is a lot harder why because it dissipates the temperature more than than the uh, positive side right the pad is, is a lot stronger. So, <clears throat> get a tweezer to grab it. I 
Now, this is a used capacitor that I have here just for testing the computer, but I'm not, obviously not going to leave that in here. I like to keep always good use capacitors for testing. And sometimes, I mean, if you cannot find it, I mean, it's nothing you can do, right? Nothing else you can do. Let me clean that <clears throat> with a brush that I had here before. <laughs> right here. I got this, this, and that. Perfect. Just trying to get some of the plastic. This manufacturer uses... Uh, it's like a clear coat on the uh, board. Hopefully you guys can see that there. Is this. That is just to protect the board a little bit against uh, corrosion from new. I just going really easy with a tweezer, you know, removing that away. I cannot leave that there for now. I guess we'll spray the whole board after it's uh, done. And to clean that, I use the PC board and this one. Uh, the flux uh, remover for PC board, that's the best. And just a Q-tip. You'll see. I gotta clean all this side silicone. That's the way they seal this one. Like a gray silicone. That looks pretty good. Hopefully now you guys can see the difference in here, here. Perfect. Now well, let's get the <clears throat> capacitor. I always like to open those in on top of the bench. I got these magnetic arms and this base from quad hands really really good I mean it's this is super heavy it's like 10 pounds so you don't need to bolt it or anything and it has this uh, magnetic hands that I can grab all the um, the boards pretty good One difference in between the uh, tantalium capacitors, I want to show you this since we're here. Let me get that fan off. I can barely hear myself. It's a small but very strong. So, what I was saying is um, as far as capacitors, you can look online, but the tantalium capacitors, the strip is facing the positive. So I put this into continuity. I think you can hear the beep. So this size will be ground and let's find a ground. Come on. Um, Sure. So the case is then grounded. I guess so. We can consider or check that with the other capacitors. And on the case of this, uh, let me move the board a little bit. Well, it's going to be hard to see.
Let me see if I can put that on the microscope. And I'm going to do a, a zoom just for you guys. I'm not I'm not going to be using the microscope, but at least on the video. You see how now we had this has the, the strip in here or the stripe. That is the negative on the uh, electrolytic capacitors. And let me show you that. So this is ground. And it should be, yep, you see that? So I'm on the strip side on the blue capacitor, which is an uh, uh, electrolytic capacitor. That's going to be a little off. So I'm there, and I'm touching the north strip on the centalliums. So it's in, in backwards. Just so you guys take that in consideration when you're working on on a computer. Tantalium capacitors, they are um, marked differently than uh, how hopefully I'm saying it right. Remember, English is not my first language. <laughs> Let me put this back into focus. That's good. You guys can see good. So again, we're working on this one. So the, the stripe is positive. I'm going to put a little bit of a flux. That makes it a lot easier to solder. Just a little bit. And I keep that for the mass of the. So what I'm going to solder first is the positive side just to hold the capacitor in place. Perfect. And I go over to the negative side, which is going to take a lot more heat. Now I melt. Hopefully you guys saw that. And I just go one more time on the positive side, so just to lay it flat. You can do it like this, or you can use a hotter station. I think this is less uh, invasive for temperature-wise. And that is a I always like to double check the soldering. I mean, that's a nice thing about having the microscope, right? Gotta change the height for this side. And that's perfect. All right, so let's move on to the next one. I'm going to remove this small one. And we're going to do the same thing. I like to apply a little bit of us. Flux always, so we can put it here. And I'm going to remove this small one and then the big one, or the bigger one. So we can um, work on the, on the tie part right there. Yeah, a little smaller, so it's not going to be so hard to remove. The harder, you know, the, the biggest, the harder. 
and I'm going to do the same thing to clean the the area out of that uh, clear coating. Again, I'm just going very easy. Otherwise, you will scratch the board and you don't want to do that. So I'm going super, super soft just to remove that clear coat. <clears throat> Got the rolls of side already here. Like to re thin the pads. And it's going to make a, a better alloy for us now or for me to, to work. All right, let's try the bigger one. Same procedure. Let me make sure it's on. The view for you. Right, one second, guys. I need to get a rag to clean the tip of the tweezer. This one is out of, out of sleep every time I put them in there. You can hear that bib is fully hot already. Like to replace this always. Perfect. And as you can see, it's very simple. If you work the way I'm doing it, go to the positive side, which is the one that's going, it's not going to need that much heat. You lift it a little bit and then the ground side will come a lot easier. Now let's get this clear coat out. I use mouse or electronics most of the time to get these uh, electronic digi key mouser. I like to keep, you know, a record on one company like that. I can go back to orders and everything just pretty easy. Nice thing about this product, it dries up really quick and it's safe for electronics. All right, let's put a little more solder and mix it to the rye alloy that we are using now. That's how you do it. Hopefully you guys can see the pads nice and shiny there. All right, guys, I'm going to replace the capacitors and I'm going to uh, come back in a second to do the uh, EEPROM with you. And then we put them in the KTAC and transfer the information so you guys can see that too, all right? But to not make the video too long. All right, guys, actually, let me get you a little closer. And let me spin this. Let's try, but it's so nice. I'll show you in a second how it looks, you know, on the period of the video. And let me start the uh, recording here. Yes, we're there. Perfect. So as you can see, I got already pretty much all the capacitors. I replaced these four right here. So we got, this is going to be a little different numbers, but that's, they're the same. These two are the same. 
And then the last one, which was the blowing capacitor, shorter one, is this one right here. So they're all good. And I haven't cleaned that one really good. So let's do that right now. I will be doing a, a full clean up after no matter what. I always do. You don't want to leave uh, all flaws in there. It will start creating corrosion. No matter what, I got to remove, like I said, all this silicone and everything. But I like to, as I go, do a, a good clean up. So the last one is just to, like, you know, extra carefulness for those that knows me you know that I am very precaution with cleaning and in electronics is super important otherwise you start getting corrosion on the board and you don't want that all right so let's get removed now the uh, EEPROM this one is a uh, it's an ST uh, what is that nine five Have to read nine three three two zero yeah I think so and for that one I use a wick again what you need to do or you try to do with the boards is stress the last with temperature if you don't need to use a hot air gun don't because that is going to um, you know create uh, a lot of problems that you don't want to deal with later especially on computer like this one they are coated with like uh, a clear coat so I'm putting just a little bit of a flux in there and again I'm just going to use a wick to suck some of that um, solder <clears throat> And I think this step is going to be okay for this. Wait for the bip. All right, there it is. And I just, you know, laying in there. Let the wick do its job. And you can see the difference in the in the pads. Cut the one in. That's all you need to do with the wick. Just keep cutting it so it's clean. That will suck anything that is there, a steel, and it's going to make the removing much easier. You guys can see good. Let's go to the other side. I think I need to get this a little closer. Getting all the smoke still. I was thinking to buy a big one, but it's just, you know, so much. <laughs> this one works good. Oh, I forgot to cut it. Right, one important thing that you want to do is also make sure which is pin one before you remove any any IC or um, EEPROM. 
Yes, yeah, nine five three two zero. It's an ST nine five three two zero. I can put this um, one back. I don't need both. But I get to put the bag inside the other one. Just wanted to keep the EEPROM or the EEPROMs out. Okay. I got this one from ST as well. They're the new ones. This uh, this one is the 9532. Actually, it's the same 95320 as you can see, hopefully, right there. So we got the exact same one. And one thing that you need to, uh, or how I know which one is pin one, this has a like a shave, like this is a square and this is a shave, and in there, in especially in the new one, you can see it has a little dent right in here. That's pin one, so pin one will be right here. All right, so we can uh, get the new one out of the way. But for these, I will def definitely be using the hotter gun. Or hotter ascension, a station. <laughs> Get this in a better, so you guys will be seeing this perfectly. <clears throat> and I like always to keep a little, just in case something happens, you can at least see the side. Because I have many times that the recording something happens, but hopefully this time it will not. No, no vacuum. It will beep the same thing, you know. It has to go. I got it. I think it's 500. Like to start, you know, just put in some temperature in here. Hopefully with the... Um, with what I did with the wick, it's not going to be that hard to remove. It's almost there. You need to, you know, heat up the board a little bit. I bet she's already off, but it's the clear coat that it was holding it, so it is off now. And this one turns off as soon as it sits in there. Let's put all one there. Let's get a little more flux in here to clean the pads. <clears throat> there was almost nothing in there left. From the wick, it does pretty, pretty good uh, work. Yeah, I'm just going removing a little bit of that clear cut, which doesn't seem to be much in here. This is, no, nope, that is just a uh, flux. I need to thin the pads. That's what you're looking for. Perfect. And what I like to do, I'm going to use a hot air gun again, but I like to set it up with the um, pencil tip. If I can grab it with a tweezer, I'm using my left hand. 
and I just like to secure it. See that will hold it in place. Actually, it's too much on this side. Let me put that back in there. Like it to be even. That looks pretty even. Oh. You need to have surgeon steady hands for this. I just like to secure it like that. And then I come just with the last pass with this. Uh -huh. Yes, a small pressure on the tap. Perfect. And that is beautiful. I'm going to retouch just this one. Yeah, that'll look good. All right, so I can turn these off and let's wait for that one. I can turn the fan off, which is the one that's making the most noise. <clears throat> Before I clean the area where the uh, EPROM is, I like to let it cool down a little bit because of the same, you know, obvious reasons. And now I'm just going to set them up into the uh, K tag. So I'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, I cleaned the board. EPROM is done. And I want to show now uh, putting back the memory files for the EPROM. I'm going to start from scratch. Um, we don't need that yet. Well, actually, we do. So let me start the recording now. That will be the screen recording. So this is uh, this is not that one. It is um, uh, that, but I think it's ECM. We can use that one. Same thing. One important thing to do is see what the PCM says, and it's, it's, it's or the ECM. It says ECM zero four zero two. <clears throat> so we're going to use this and as you can see this is just all of those are pretty much the same I already had the connector uh, in the computer attached that's where this red dot uh, means and then we need to have two grounds and one power which I'm going to have to take out of this mess. Ooh. <laughs> Should have take all these apart. I have. Uh, I got a lot of stuff here. Just going to lay it down to see which one I can use. So we said one power. Which I just need one of these red ones. Yeah, that should work. I need some pin twenty three. Yeah. Connector A. hard to say which one is A and B with this. 
look at the numbers just like this yep mm -hmm. so this is connector 20 i mean a23 <clears throat> and i need two grounds perfect which is 8 and 24 sorry 16 and 24 Very convenient, they're all pretty close to each other. That should work. I need to get two alligator clips. And I'm just gonna grab some new ones. Yeah, this one from the proto board because <clears throat> out of this cable this is the other cable that they request here right here the one you know 14p 600k t02 that's this one this connects to the k tag on the side i will secure the connector with the bolts so i'm gonna need the red one, I use these big ones, they have a, an easier to work connector, it grabs a lot better, and so it's with the ground, one second guys, I'm recording. Okay, so sorry. All right, so the Y will be the power, sort of the ground. And obviously the other one is gonna be the power. I like to do this because it's just a lot easier than a cable that's hanging in there. <clears throat> and then we need to do that, which is already there. We need to use a 144, 300 T100. This one. Not this one. And where is the rest of my hair? So this is 104, now it's 100. Oh, yeah. Gonna keep that one out. Put that there, so it's not in my way. One important thing that you need to see is in this adapter, see the one of you're, you're using, it has to have this 063, which is exactly the one I have in my hands. 06301, that's exactly that because the pins change a little bit on the pin and they don't look like just like each other. The ribbon cable, it goes in just one way. go back here I'm doing this like in, in, you know as a scratch with you like so you guys can see <clears throat> and very important to collect I mean to connect this as it shows in there because again this is a, a 10 pin connector that can go either way so just based on the microprocessor here and this other area because you can have that in there and then this area here so this will go 
like that, right? So that's how you got to put it. I'm going to put them into the um, frame. Just use the, one of the clamps in there to hold it down. You can actually raise this so I can see. Use the light for, for that. And the same thing, you know, just plug it in. Make sure it's going straight and it clicks. Both sides, perfect. That should all be ready to go. <clears throat> and we click OK. And then we're going to select the one we're using, which is the first one. We're going to click OK. And in this case, we don't, we're not reading. We're going to restore and just say EEPROM. So deselect the restore. Click on the EEPROM. Click on write. That's going to look for the file. Uh, or you're going to have to look for the file. Uh, that's what I like to um, make sure that I save. Oh, that's not the one. All the information. I think it's the F EPR file. Okay, it's right in and now. Which is good, that means that I was able to communicate. So all the um, caps and all that work was done correctly. And I'm about to put them in the simulator at least to make sure that we have communication, which was, you know, the concern with this when it was a dead, a dead computer. And this is real time. I'm cutting now on this part, so you guys see what is involved into a situation like that. You know, when you need to read and write an EEPROM with KTAC. Writing successfully completed, so that's that's it. We can exit here. I'm going to cancel here, close the K tag, and stop the recording. I'll be right back, guys. Let me set up the computer in the simulator and see, make sure everything is fine. All right, guys. Yes, obviously, as usual, just to save time, uh, so you guys don't go into the whole process of me finding wires and everything. I did the whole connection. Um, I think I already showed this before, but just in case, and for this video, I mean, no matter what, it's a new video. I always save my information so I don't have to uh, guess. Um, I do go over to the service manual for each uh, vehicle that I'm being working on or I'm going to be working on. So I have, you know, download and save that information in here. So let me, well, before I do this, let me start the screen recording. I almost forgot about that. And the recording will start now. All right, perfect. So now I can show you. Actually, I should be in the last ones open. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is the manual. I like that. It open up exactly where the pinouts are. So we have in here connector B, which you know pins for the B. There's only A and B, and it's a stamp. If I show the uh, microscope, you will be able to see. Then this is pins for A. I wrote down, you know, which ones are my grounds, which are injectors, and so on. So that's exactly how I do it. And this is um, 8.1 liter. Let me see. This is the wrong page. Right here. It's a 2004 350 Mac Bravo uh, MPI Mercury Marine. And um, that's 
all the pinouts. I always save information. I have to check and see if this one has a shift interrupt on. It's a Bravo engine, so most likely I will have to put that on. <clears throat> but this is how I do it. You know, I get all the pinouts and write every, all the information that I need. I'm going to start a uh, scanner for this. computer is on but not running like I have no RPMs just usually connect the computer to the simulator for like a couple of minutes so all the capacitor shows up and then I get a good communication that's the connector that I need and then I just connect in here all right perfect we got you know 12.3 uh, battery voltage I have codes obviously because not everything is connected but I just want to see if it's a shift interrupt pit there's a minimum pits on this computer I got oil pressure which at adult should be around 33 pounds the manifold air temperature is is okay the coolant temperature is okay port exhaust and the starboard exhaust I most likely gonna have to jump those and those are probably um, the ones are giving a little bit of issue, but I have the available power. What this manufacturer does is letting me know how much power am I allowed to have, even with the codes that I have on 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 the system right now. So I just I can read the codes. I do have the ESC. This is a fold notice. The following fold notice: Peter's fold, three fold, student fold. Yeah, I have none of those connected. So that is normal. And all those codes are active. C pump, I don't have any of those connected. And it's impossible. You don't really need to um, um, check those as far as connected right now. You can check individually because those are output. Some of those are output, like the IAC output. I need to uh, check that one up because that is an important one. I will most likely be replacing the IC for that. And even though, let me see if I have a spark advance manifold. Yeah, I, I do the cycle. So let me just go back one second. I mean, that's what we are here for. So let me open up the manual again to see which is the IAC pin. I think it's in connector B. Why did I lose the pin outs? Our diagrams. Let's see if he's in here. Yeah, wasn't so bad. This connector A, connector B. I'm looking for the IAC total position sensor. No, it's not in here. IAC is A20. And that is a, it looks like it's a pulse width modulation. So if that's the case, because that's what it says in here, I, I do the cycle, so most likely the computer is going to ground that down. So I would recommend whenever you see something like that, just to use, use a test light. Don't use a, um, anything else. So the computer will be providing the ground. Just lost the power in there. Ah, probably push it. Huh. I turned the computer off. That's why you're seeing that. I'm sorry, guys. It's back into business, no problem. And I need one more pin for that. I'll try to do this. Do this quick. Have some wires ready to go. So we said it's 820, right? 
I got my memory and so many different things that please bear with me. 820, yeah, mm-hmm. So 820. I'll be the one looking at this. Uh, 17, mm-hmm. 17, 18, 19, and 20. Uh, let's reconnect. Dicom USB cable not detected. Now the computer seems to be fine. It might be my connection here. I'm using a USB hub and sometimes that, that does that. It loses the connection. Cannot communicate with the ECM. Check my connections. Because I know that we are good. And I know that we're there because look, we are definitely getting connection. It's something to do with this setup. All right. We're good. Yeah, yeah, because I show any new do the cycle. Let's uh, put some RPMs in here. I like the rest of the stuff that I'm seeing in there. Some of you are asking me to show pretty close to here I mean I'm sorry but I do need to work in this um, I can tell you that I'm using on the simulator on automake or auto automatic make I piece <clears throat> I select for this one the nine it's just you know a, a square way 58 plus one perfect it's actually too high of RPM for Yes, yeah, showing 1500 RPM. So let me go out. <laughs> but I saw the IAC working. So I need to select something different for this one. I'm just going to select the first one. Actually, a Passat. Was it the Passat? It's just a square wave. No, it's the same thing. Yeah, I need something with lower um, hertz. That's what I do. I just, you know, test. It's not going to damage anything in here. So the first one is just a square way. Perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see how it's now just blinking. I can now increase the RPM. Perfect. Around 650. Right there, six, 670. But we can see the IAC do is do the cycle, and that is based on on throttle position, which how much we got on the throttle. I can change that. No effect. I like to play with map and so on to see if we have any changes. Manifold absolute pressure should be around six. Let's get more RPM. The computer is able to turn that on, but it's giving me, you know, like almost 40% do the cycle, which I mean, it's fine. I have one of the injector drivers working and that should be the last one. Actually, it's only two, two out of the, okay. So 
it's fine. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. I that was I thought I'll have only I have four connection for injectors, only two on this engine itself. Injection timing seems to be okay. Let me get down RPMs wise a little bit. Can change the coolant temperature and raise that up a little. Oop, go away. That changes injection time based on temperature, obviously. Oof, that it will be too much. Around 160 is normal on this one. 160, I think, is the thermostat for for these engines. Manifold air temperature. Want to increase that a little bit too. This one's uh, this engine uses a, a separate injection or ignition module, so it's just a, a confirmation that I'm not I don't have it here. It's not important. Not the complaint. The complaint on this one it was a dead computer, so I'm just want to make sure that the EEPROM and everything is reading correctly. It looks like every, everything is fine. This is what you need to know uh, need to do when you replace capacitors and so on. Yeah, the injection is. It's working really good, so. Codes, uh, codes, uh, definitely we're gonna have codes because I don't have, again, all the stuff that should be there. And now we can see, you see the IAC output code is inactive. So it's just about doing that, just select them one at a time and then you can check, make sure that computer can activate those. If it's a sensor or if it's an output, that's how I do it, you know, like right here, fuel pump relay, code is active because I don't have that going into, you know, let's say, you know, you can simulate a relay with a test light as well. It's just looking for a coil. I would not recommend to use this one. It might be a little too heavy for that. Let's use, you know, a LED test light. That's, that's plenty. Remember, you know, less than 700 milliamps. I would recommend to use like 400 milliamps draw. That's what you're looking for, for a relay activation. Uh, this one is a NIAC, so it can take up to, you know, probably two amps, not a problem. All right, guys, so this is how I test it, uh, or how I test it. Everything is fine. The transferring of the information in the EEPROM, the changing of the capacitors. This computer is a good to go. This is a, a fully good repair, and I hope you guys like the content. Don't forget to subscribe, stay safe, and stay tuned. Please share my videos, you know, leave comments. I like to, to hear more about, you know, guys, what you like to see next. If you guys want to see more approach, I cannot give you everything that I do. Sometimes it's a little impossible for me because I have to keep some information for customers in there that I cannot share. But I like to share as much as I can. Please make questions and I will be most uh, more, more happy to answer all those. See you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, guys.